So here in Tokyo, the girls, the nightlife, the clubs, everything is controlled by those guys. Uh, so they suggested to us that maybe we need to prove ourselves to them in order to get the hangout and to get that access. So here we are with a little bit of male bonding, Yakuza style. So it wasn't too long ago that Japan was a rising power on the international stage. Now it has the steepest population decline in the world, and you wonder, well, why is that happening? It's because people aren't spending any time together, they're not getting married, and they're not having babies. According to government surveys, nearly 50% of Japanese women aged 18 to 34 are single, and more than 60% of men the same age are single as well. <laughs> Part of the equation is definitely changing gender roles, which has created a new generation of economically empowered women who no longer want to be tied down to housework or childcare. Others blame the men, a generation obsessed with virtual reality and so intimidated by real women that they prefer cyber girlfriends over real relationships. Now these are all interesting theories, but there's another one evident on the streets of Yakuza-controlled Tokyo. In a country that commodifies everything, sex sells, and the Japanese are buying. has a seemingly endless menu of relationship replacement services where you can essentially replicate anything you'd get from a relationship, be it sexual, emotional, or otherwise, without actually having to have a boyfriend or girlfriend. And now Japan is known as the Grang Nation. With more people over 65 and less people under 15 than anywhere else in the world, Japan has the fastest growing negative population on Earth. By the end of this century, Japan's population is expected to shrink by half. And believe it or not, the country actually sells more adult diapers than baby diapers. And the face of this decaying nation is this guy. He might look like a stripper, but he's not. He's what the Japanese call a host. And believe it or not, he's one of the reasons why they aren't having babies. So we're here at one of many host clubs in Tokyo, where single women come, just like these women right here, and get lavished with the kind of attention that they wouldn't get if they went to just a typical bar. Instead of taking their chances dating, more and more Japanese women are paying for companionship by coming to places like this. Host clubs charge by the hour, with prices usually in the hundreds of dollars for nothing more than conversation. When women sit down, what do they want from you? Do they want to be lavish with attention? Do they just want you to listen? Do they want you to touch their arms? Bullshit. $800,000 to sit here and listen to women talk to you. Normal for him, maybe, but it's a pretty weird place to be hanging out. There's lots of flirting, and the girls seem to be enjoying themselves, but nobody is getting laid here. And the craziest part is that no one seems to mind. We're not talking about cougars or misfits, either. These are attractive single women, mostly in their 20s and 30s, just like club regular Mayo. You're single? Yes. And are you like actively looking for a boyfriend and you don't want a boyfriend or what's your deal? She doesn't want a boyfriend. Why? Why not? Right. So many like and women aren't the only ones disillusioned with love in Japan. 
In Tokyo, there are more than 200 hostess clubs for men, oh, where a few hundred bucks can get you all the female attention you could ever want. What are you expected to do for that hour with the guy who comes down and pops down a bit of money? But the host and hostess bars are just the tip of the iceberg. In Japan today, there's a whole industry of pseudo-romance services to fit every need. If you like anime, you can pay 70 bucks an hour to go on a date with a girl dressed up like your favorite character. Or maybe having sex with dolls is more your thing. Thankfully, there's a guy for that too. And if you just want to take the day off and do some cuddling, well, you're in luck. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Go. Oh, I just got a real strong pang of not wanting to do this. So we're here at a cuddle cafe in Tokyo. These people have been kind enough to build what looks like a daycare center for toddlers where grown-ups can lie down and talk to strangers about their feelings which I'm about to do reluctantly, very, very, very reluctantly. I want that on record. Let's see the menu of services. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? Freud would have a field day. Come on in. Hello. Great. Hi. So I think I just want to get a little bit of everything, like an appetizer platter. Okay. Yeah, so how does that work then? Oh, very nice. This looks very comfortable, thank you. Do you have regulars? <laughs> oh, really? What about you? Do you have a boyfriend? Of course not. Why of course? Do you ever want a boyfriend, or do you think just stuff like this is will suffice? Wow! Oh my God! That's interesting for someone who is affectionate with strangers for a living. Jesus Christ! Okay. I think I've had enough of the arm. I think maybe we should elevate our relationship to some kind of cosplay. Maybe the French maid outfit. Oh, that is very involved. That's Victorian, basically. We should do the, uh, maybe the staring into each other's eyes thing. Nothing is weirder than this. It's profoundly, profoundly disturbing. To culminate our time together, I was hoping I could lie in your lap while you pick your wax out of my ears. We're just adding a layer of like mom to the girlfriend, so it's a mixture of a mom activity and a girlfriend activity. It's really going to town in there. I think we're probably clean. Um, <laughs> either way, we should stop this. Yeah, I'm just cleaning my brain. Uh, do you know what I owe you for everything? Thank you very much. I've seen a lot of perverse things in my life, but this pseudo romance actually really got to me. We felt like it was time for something a bit more real, and we knew exactly who could take us from the pretend cuddling into the harder depths of the illegal underworld. Headed to meet the Yakuza. I'm, I'm really looking forward to fearing for my life for a few hours and then having new friends. The Yakuza are Japan's notoriously violent organized crime syndicate, and they're well known for their disdain for Western media. They've agreed to a rare dinner meeting in the middle of Kabukicho, Hi. Tokyo's notorious Hi. red Hi. light district. If we wanted to see the real outer edges of Japan's sex industry, we'd come to the right place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I guess, Kind of to jump right into it, this is my first time in Japan. 
And one of the things that I think the Western world is most fascinated by is this just just sex culture, like the, the hostess bars and just the rabbit hole of really weird shit you can dive into. How involved is the Yakuza in, in that particular industry? <laughs> Oh, what is it? What is this? Yeah, oh, yeah, that one, the thing in the bowl there. Very nice. Thank you. Is it good? Really? It's liquid. Why did I smell it first? That was so fucking stupid. Okay. Yeah. After earning their trust, they agreed to show us some of the locals' only services. But they wouldn't tell me exactly what they had planned, just that I was to arrive at the Hyatt Hotel at midnight. So, I still don't know where we're, <laughs> what we're doing, but I do know that it's not, uh, it's frowned upon, whatever it is. So it's somewhat illegal. Somewhat illegal. Mm -hmm. So it's shrouded in secrecy. Mm -hmm. And now we're, we're going underground to a parking garage beneath the hotel. Then we're going to have to hide the camera and go up to some room and wait for some person to come do something that we don't want them to do. Please don't hurt my balls. I'm a fragile dude. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking tight. I can't believe people pay for this. Ow, holy fuck. Ow! <laughs> Ow, god damn it. Arigato. And as I crouched in this hotel room, being whipped and humiliated, this whole idea of a graying nation kind of really came into focus. The host clubs, the cuddle cafes, and even this fetish stuff. The Japanese, who are so used to commodifying everything, have managed to distill each part of a human relationship into a viable package, with dating, marriage, and eventually babies falling by the wayside. 